five bell. Stand by all stations. Attention, all districts of five alarm fire. Five bells move in immediately. That's it. Let's go. Let's go. Firefighters! Presenting Firefighters, the true-to-life story of our unsung heroes who stand ready to ride by day or night against our most murderous enemy, the Demon of Fire! In just a moment, we'll join Chief Cody, Tim, his brother Jimmy, and Detective Sergeant McGurk in the detective's office at police headquarters, where they're waiting for an answer to the radio message McGurk sent to the SS Hamilton at sea, a message they hope will save the ship from a grave danger. Now, you'll remember that after the mysterious fires involving the Central Newsreel Company's current newsreel issue, Chief Cody concluded that some person or persons unknown were trying to suppress and destroy that particular newsreel. An investigation of the newsreel disclosed a startling fact that during a shipboard interview, the newsreel cameraman accidentally got a picture of what appears to be a man in the act of committing sabotage aboard the ship. We'll learn the next thrilling development of this fire crime right after this important message. Let's go, firefighters. Let's go to the office of Detective Sergeant McGurk at police headquarters, where McGurk, Chief Cody, Tim Collins, and his brother Jimmy are waiting for an answer to their radio message to the SS Hamilton at sea. As you'll recall, the quick observation of Jimmy detected what appeared to be a man in the background of one of the newsreel stories placing a mysterious bag in one of the SS Hamilton's ventilators. Well, now the quartet waits anxiously in the detective's office for word from the threatened Hamilton. Tim. Uh, yes, Chief. Why in blazes don't you and Jimmy go home? No use of everybody losing a night's sleep over this thing. Oh, I'm not sleepy, Chief, honest. Well, we're all right, Chief, and I'd rather wait and see what the word is. And I'm, I'm sure Jimmy wouldn't sleep if I did send him home. It's been over two hours. There should be an answer soon. Well, at least we got a message through. That's something. We know that so far the Hamilton is safe. But for how long? It may take a day or more to make a thorough search of that ship. Yeah. And while they're searching, the little suitcase that guy planted in the ventilator is is ticking, ticking away. Why the blazes don't we hear? I'm going to phone that radio office. No, well, that's right. it. Maybe that's Got it. it. Hello? Yes? Speaking. You have? Good. Read it. Yes? Yes? Holy... Yeah, I got it. Thanks, thanks a lot. Gentlemen, a message from the SS Hamilton. They've made the search, and they found the suitcase. Yes? And in it, they found the charge powerful enough to blow the ship to smithereens. Heaven be praised, we warned them in time. Yes, the SS Hamilton is safe. Now, the question is... Who the saboteur is? Who put the bomb aboard the Hamilton? Right. What do you propose, McGurk? The biggest manhunt this city's ever seen. This morning at dawn... We go to work rounding up every suspicious character we can lay our hands on. And so the dragnet goes out. What started out as a routine fire in a film vault becomes one of the biggest manhunts in the city's history. Police scour the waterfront, picking up every person who might shed some light on the activities of a criminal ring that doesn't stop at anything, even wholesale murder, to gain its ends. Although the case is now in the hands of the police, Chief Cody, Tim, and Jimmy keep a close watch on the developments. And late the next day, while gathered in the chief's office to learn what progress McGurk and the police have made, the phone rings. Well, this may be McGurk now with some word. Yes, sir. The chief Cody speaking. Yeah. Oh, hello, Gillette. Oh, what's that? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, thanks for calling. We'll be right over. Well, what is it, chief? Any word on the sabotage case? John Gillette, manager of Central Newsreel. Says he may have something hot. He's called McGurk and wants me to come over, too. Well, can... Uh, I mean, could Tim and I go, too? Oh, now, Jimmy... Well, sure, we... why not? You Collins are in this as deep as anyone. Come on. Yippee! Uh, I mean, thanks, Chief. Well, we'll go in my car. From the way Gillette talked, what he has is really hot. 
Gathered in John Gillette's office in the Central Newsreel building a few minutes later, the Chief, Tim, and Jimmy listen as McGurk questions the newsreel manager. All right, Gillette. Tell me exactly what happened. Well, as, as I say, I'm not sure that anything has happened, but, uh, well, there were two phone calls. Right. One was from a man who said he was the manager of the Bijou Theater. He asked what happened to this week's newsreel. And you said it was destroyed in the fire. That's right. Then he asked, don't you have a master negative? Um, couldn't I have other prints made? And? I told him, yes, I could. And did he order another print of the newsreel? No, no, he didn't. He just said thanks and hung up. Uh, nothing so unusual about that phone call as I can see? No, except that five minutes later, the real manager of the Bijou walked in my office. What do you mean, real manager? Well, the other was a phony. The real manager said he never called. Uh, your second phone call? You said there were two? Well, this is the one that's really got me guessing, McGurk. About a half hour ago, I get this call from what is supposed to be the laboratory across town that does my printing from the master negative. Yes? Well, the man says, this is the lab. Understand you want to get some more prints made up of the newsreel you lost in the fire. What did you say? Well, nothing. I just let him talk. He says, if you'll send the master negative over, I'll run some more prints off right away. Yeah, what's so strange about that call? Well, just this. The lab never calls me on a thing like that. It's always me that calls them. I see. And you think... I think this second call is a phony, too. Sounds mighty like it, McGurk. Uh, what did you tell him? I told him I had to check with the theaters first to see how many prints I wanted. Uh, stalling, you see. And then I called you, Sergeant. Glad you did. Uh, he said he'd call back. Good. Jimmy? Yes, Sergeant? How'd you like to be a messenger boy for about half an hour? Sure, Sergeant. I... Hey, what for? What are you cooking up, McGurk? When this so-called lab man calls back, I want you, Gillette, to tell him that you're sending the master negative over right away. Oh, with, with, with Jimmy? Don't worry. He'll get plenty of protection. Then you think that somebody's still after that master negative? Of course. You see, here's the way I figured. First, they call to find out if there's still one in existence. Then, another phony call asking to have it sent over to the lab. Oh, boy, how they want that newsreel. Well, we won't disappoint them. We'll send the negative over. How about it, Jimmy? You want to play messenger? What? Sure, Sergeant. Oh, wait a minute. I I don't know about that, McGurk. If those crooks are at the other end, I, I don't want He'll Jimmy... He'll be tail us. don't worry. Now, I want it to look good, like we're playing it straight. And with Jimmy carrying the film, it will look legitimate. It'll be all right, Tim, I'm sure. With McGurk close behind. My hunch is that whoever's behind this sabotage attempt knows the evidence that will convict them in that newsreel. They also know that without that evidence, we haven't got a chance to convict the guy who put that explosive in the ship's ventilator. Okay, McGurk, it's your show. Uh, no, I'll get it. All right. Hello? Oh, yes. Uh, yes, yes, I did. Uh, I'll need 12 prints. Right. I'm sending the master negative over right away. Yes, by messenger. Right. That was him. Okay. Give the film to Jimmy, and let's go. Ten minutes later, the figure of a boy is seen swinging along a cross-town street, a metal can of film in one hand. He walks slowly, casually, and from the way he walks and acts, and the clothes he wears, he looks like any other messenger boy who daily makes his way through the city streets. But for one man who stands now in a doorway searching the crowded street with dark, quick eyes, this messenger with a can of film in his hand is one in a thousand. The boy gets opposite the doorway suddenly. You, kid. Well, what do you want? The film. Give me the film, quick. A gun. Yeah, a gun, and don't try and... All right, Jimmy, I got him. You dirty little... You were tail. <laughs> now you... Now you... <laughs> Rad Raider. I wondered if you weren't mixed up in this. All right, McGurk, you win. But I tell you one thing. I ain't the only guy in this. I'm pretty certain of that, Raider. And you're going to have a chance to tell us just who is behind this Hey, part. you all right, Jimmy? Oh, sh sure, there was nothing to it. Good boy, Jimmy. You walked down that street like a soldier. Nice job, all right, Jimmy. Thanks to you, we've cracked one of the biggest sabotage plots in the city's history. Come on, Raider. I want a nice long talk with you. Well, it must have taken a lot of courage for Jimmy to walk down the street with that film, almost certain that he would be intercepted by one of the sabotage gang. But with Detective Sergeant McGurk right behind him, there was little real danger. 
And now, thanks to Jimmy's help, the sabotage plot that began with a small film vault fire has been broken up. There'll be more adventures involving our friends, Chief Cody, Tim, and Jimmy, in the next True to Life episode of The Firefighters. In just a moment, Chief Cody will tell you, boys and girls, how you can help the firefighters in your own town. But first, here's a message you ought to hear. And now here's Chief Bob Cody with a message for all firefighters. Chief Cody. Hello, boys and girls. Are you going to take a drive into the country soon? I mean into real country with plenty of woods and trees and wildlife. Well, if you are, here's a mighty valuable tip. When traveling through country where there are woods and forests, do these four things. One, put out every match. Two, drown out with water every fire. Three, see that smokers use ashtrays on every auto trip. Four, again for smokers, crush out every cigarette. See that these four things are done religiously, and you'll help prevent one of the worst scourges we have in this country, forest fires. Millions and millions of dollars worth of potential lumber go up in smoke every year because folks do not observe these four simple rules. So help keep the forests of our country green growing, won't you? Help prevent forest fire. Well, that's all for now. Till I drop in again next time, so long. Fire Chief Cody and the young rookie fireman Tim Collins will be back on the same station the next time you hear... That's it. Let's go! Let's go! Firefighters! Firefighters is a copyrighted feature of William F. Holland Productions.